What's going on? It's Kevin Kenny. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Build Series here in New York City. And uh, we're about to be joined here on stage by a duo who is redefining what it means to play the cello. I should say has been redefining for many years what it means to play that instrument. The new album, Let There Be Cello, is out and available everywhere now. And they're about to hit the road on their first ever U.S. arena tour. Let's give it up for two cellos. And the winner is... <laughs> We actually, we were just watching uh, here in the studio, if you're, uh, you're watching at home, uh, the video for Eye of the Tiger. Can we actually bring that up really quick? Because I have a question for you. You know, it's kind of an open secret when, a, when bands do videos, they're lip syncing. But this looks so real. Like, you have to actually be playing these instruments when you make the video, right? Yeah. We are a cellist. You are the cellist. <laughs> Magical cellist. No, I mean, is there, are you like, is that, is that, are you actually playing the instrument in the video? No, is it, I mean, we record the audio before, but right. we are playing it, but. We are very good at... This got intense. We are good at faking. Yes. We're Great good, actors. Good fakers, yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for this to pop up at a subway station here in the city. This would be quite the scene. Uh, I want to actually uh, kick off with how you guys met. Uh, you guys were teenagers, I guess, when you met. You know, and now you're 21 years old. But you were back in a... You met in some, like, master class. I'm sure there's tons of students in this class that you guys meet at. What made you two gravitate towards each other? Well, we were both obsessed obsessed with music, cello, and when you meet another obsessed individual, you, you, feel, you don't feel as lonely. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always, uh, from the minute I met him, I, I admired his talent. He's, you know, he's one of a kind. So I was always inspired by him. I hope he was inspired by, by me as well, but, you know, and, we are so different, but together we are so unique, and that's what makes this 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 thing so special. Right. You have to say nice things about him. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what, was it was it uh, was it that dedication that attracted you two, or was it like did you guys hit it off like as buddies? It's like uh, actually people consider us to be rivals at the time really because we were like standing out as like yeah talented ones exceptional and like we were both uh, trying to you know be the best possible and there was always this element of competition but right. in like but in a great way like ronaldo and messi who are like always trying to be better than one another and mm -hmm. this is what makes you be the best possible version of yourself right so actually we help each other to become who we are now. It's like the Transformers. You guys came together and now you're this... Uh... But interesting, the minute we joined the forces, everything just exploded, you know? which It was like the Big Bang happened straight yeah. away. It was like destiny, like stars aligned. Like we were both like so inspired, so competitive, you know, rivals in a way. But the minute we joined forces, like everything started happening so fast, like avalanche of everything. It was cra crazy. Why was it the cello for you guys? Because you actually, you, you grew up like rock and roll fans. You know, like Aerosmith was a big inspiration for you guys and whatnot, Steven Tyler, who you've performed with. But like, why not start a rock and roll band? Why was it the cello? Well, I mean, this rock and roll thing came much later in life. We were very focused on, you know, cello, classical music for many, many years, you know? Which was actually a good thing because we started discovering pop and rock music relatively late uh, compared to our our friends, our uh, people of same age, uh, which was good because then we approach everything with fresh ears. Like we were so excited. Oh, have you heard the new Michael Jackson song? Oh, wow. Have you heard this band, Guns N' Roses? They're so cool. We were already like 15, 16, 17 years old. And most of our generation, they already knew <laughs> about this <laughs> song right. already. So we were like two nerds, you know. Well, it's funny. Like, I, I'm sure coming to rock and roll later and having that classical foundation that you guys had, you were probably able to see parallels between the two worlds that maybe, uh, you know, a rock and roll first fan may not have. I know you guys are passionate about how similar or more similar classical music is to rock and roll than the average fan may expect. What are those similarities in your minds? Well, there are much more similarities than people would think, you know? Yeah. I mean, all those composers were rock stars of their own time, you know? And this is how we approach. We even, when we played classical music, we we would approach it in that way, you know? But we were criticized for that right. in classical world. 
yeah, they played with so much adrenaline, energy. It was crazy, you know, and people were like always like <laughs> shocked yeah. by the way we play, you know. But now we are free to like go as crazy as oh, we yeah. want, you know. You know, you're playing arenas. You can do whatever the heck yeah, you want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are, I know you, you alluded to it right there that uh, you got some pushback, right? Some backlash maybe from the traditionalists, the older people in uh, the world of classical music, because you were breaking all these rules. For someone who like me who's really not versed in classical music, what are some of these rules that you guys were breaking? Some of these traditions you were breaking away from? Many. I mean, there is no other classical musician rolling on the floor or jumping in the audience, going, <laughs> running around. Crowd surfing. <laughs> Yes, I mean, this this is just a few of the examples. Also, the way we, we our show runs is very very free, very relaxed, laid back. We talk to the audience, we joke around, we joke with each other, you know, call each other names, everything. <laughs> but that that's what breaks the wall between the audience and the performer. Performer and in classical music, they still they have this wall between the performer, the artist, and the audience, which I don't think helps anyone. And it certainly doesn't bring younger generation into the concert halls. Yeah. What, uh, your show's really cool, too, because it kind of it kind of grows throughout the night. You know, it starts off maybe on the softer side. And I think by the end, like, don't you guys bring out drummers and stuff? It's, like, pretty wild. Like, can you kind of run us through a, a typical concert? Yeah, I mean, that's the special thing about our concert is, like, a whole journey. We start like, with some classical movie music and then gradually build more and more and more and it becomes total craziness in the end. And drummer joins in and then everyone goes wild. And it's like the full experience that you cannot really experience anywhere. On the rock concert, there is only rock. On the classical concert, it's only this side. And we just we combine everything. Nothing is missing. Yeah. All the elements are there. Who's a, Who brought up the idea of back in the day first of like going in a different direction with the music and not being a traditional cellist group where did that idea like initially come from at the start he was already experimenting some something he had some projects with pop singers rock singers uh, and then we thought had a, had an idea to do something crazy different with cellos and uh, we did this first song smooth criminal put it on YouTube, went viral straight away. And the rest was history. Like the first thing we did together exploded. So that was the, like really the first thing, that smooth criminal video. And then that's how Elton found you guys, right? Elton John? Yeah. yeah. That's wild. Can you tell that story? I'm sure you've told it before, but Yeah, I mean after the we posted the video on YouTube, it went viral straight away, had many millions millions of hits and then uh, different TV shows started sending us offers like Ellen DeGeneres, we went there, uh, you know, first time in America. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the welcome. Then Elton John, uh, he saw the video, and at the time I was studying at the Royal Academy of Music in London, and through the school he reached out to us, and he said, guys, I want to take you on the road with, with me, and we joined his band, played with his band, and later we, we started opening his shows, so for three years we would open his shows all around the world and play with him as well in, the, in his band. It's wild. So crazy, yeah. There's a, there's a great video online, if you guys want to check it out, of Elton John literally just going on for five minutes just praising you guys. He says that he, you, you were the most exciting musicians he's ever seen since Jimi Hendrix. Well, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Elton, right? Yeah, I mean, great people recognize greatness. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? What can you say, man? We're also Humble. very modest. And modest. Yes, yeah, yes. Modesty. Most importantly, at the top of that list. Big He's quality. known for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are uh, you know, you're all about sort of uh, breaking down these preconceptions about classical music. I thought it'd be fun to break down some maybe preconceptions about you guys. What are some unexpected facts about you that we may not expect. You don't want to know. <laughs> no? <laughs> tell us the dark, deep secrets. Why don't, why don't you tell his, and then you can tell his. <laughs> no, actually, there is nothing. Nothing? What you see is what, what you, you get? What you see is what you get. Really? Do you like what you see? <laughs> <laughs>
It just turned into a dating show. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, then let's get to, uh, to, to the new album that dropped this past fall. You guys kick off the album, or I guess uh, you kick off your shows with the album, but the album, um, I think, it's a lot of film scores. Am I right? No, that was one before. Oh, that was one before. Yeah. All right. Well, actually, I wanted to ask you about the film scores, and then we'll get to the new one. Is uh, How did you go about choosing the, uh, the songs? Were they movies you really enjoyed, or was it more about just like the composition of the song from the movie? Uh, songs. Okay, so it was music, more of the songs in the movie. The, we chose the most beautiful soundtracks, melodies that sound the most beautiful, expressive on cello. And that's how we made the album with London Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we wanted to go back to the roots with our latest album, just two cellos, you know. People were fed up with all the gentle romantic side. We went back to our dark side. Good old rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, good old rock and roll. This is how it all started anyway. What, uh, I mean, uh, kind of paint us a picture of what we can expect if, if, if you're watching right now and you haven't heard the album. It is out and available everywhere. Is this a, is this a heavier sound than the previous record is what I'm kind of gathering from you? Yeah, more up-tempo, heavier, more distorted, more aggressive, more, you know, if you drive listening to this album, you'll probably get a speeding ticket. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's a warning for you at home. Do not drive to this record. <laughs> Uh, do you have a favorite song, each other, like on the record? Do you, do you find that after you put a body of work like this together, do you have different opinions coming out of it? Like you may gravitate towards one song, you may the other? We didn't even listen to the album. <laughs> 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 what songs are on? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get around to that, man. Oh, I'm sure there are some good stuff on it. Right. <laughs> we, can we can only assume, right? No, there is like, there are like one slow song there. It's, that's my favorite. You like the slow <laughs> song? I'm a you romantic the rock and roller. I'm a romantic. Oh, yeah. Actually, I don't look like this, but I have a soft side. There yeah. is a soft side. See, that could have been one of your answers before. But I you know. know. See, now you're opening up. Finally. Finally. <laughs> I knew we were I need to keep that. drinking this yeah, uh, exactly. Please, tea. Yeah, exactly. Cheers. I can't tell which one's the water, though. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Are you cheersing? Yeah. All right. Cheers. There you go. Um, cheers, man. Uh, I wanted to kind of uh, talk about just the cello as an instrument because, again, I am, I'm pretty naive to the world of classical music. And I know, like, you guys obviously both play the cello. Duh. But, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a rock band, let's say, you might both play the guitar, but your roles in that band with that instrument are different. Are you guys doing different things, or what are your roles when you're playing the same instrument together? I am the frontman. You are, of course, yeah. And he's doing the rhythm section, bass line, Tuning, Oops, tuning uh, my cello, yeah. <laughs> cleaning my. He's roadie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. We we actually try to make it. Wingman, everything. We try to make it uh, <laughs> interesting, you know, like <laughs> like you know, divide parts to make it interesting. Right. You know, we try to change in the range. I wipe his ass. I wipe his ass. <laughs> 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 where is this? Where is this going? Uh, <laughs> Do you, do you think of it as do you think of it yeah do you think of it as a com <laughs> do, you, do do you think of it as a conversation up there not like this yeah. kind of conversation wherever the heck this is going but do you think of it as like you you know you're speaking with this instrument to each other <laughs> he's losing it <laughs> no we we divide parts you know sometimes he plays the lead sometimes I play the lead you know make it interesting for the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you must have uh, you must have achieved almost like uh, you must be able to read each other's minds. You know, they talk about that rock and roll ESP where you just get kind of look at each other and know what the other's thinking. I mean, would you say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, let's get on a tour. Uh, you guys are launching your uh, first ever U.S. arena tour. You're playing some like major places. You're playing the Amway uh, Center, Amway Arena down in uh, Orlando. That's where the Orlando Magic basketball team plays. Uh, you're playing Radio City Music Hall here in the city. Uh, two shows in one day. Two shows. Yeah. What at Radio City? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know they. Guys, had are you that. coming? <laughs> Woo! There you go. Guess they're so excited. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. No, uh, you're playing two shows at Radio City. I, I didn't even know. Like, so what is that? Is like a matinee and then like a night show? Yeah. Wow. You guys like? I want to ask you about like the training leading up to tour. We're like three weeks out from tour right now. 
Like, what do you do to prepare? I mean, it's very demanding. The show, what we do, is like, like you know, sport. Yeah. Crazy. We are sweating, like you know. <laughs> what? Like what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is what is the sweat like? <laughs> very dense sweat. Okay. No, I mean it's very tiring and challenging what we do because it's only two of us, you know, and we need right. to keep the full sound all the time. You cannot like have a rest or anything. Just keep playing the whole time. That was good. It's true, right? That was good. Very good. Yeah, we're we're gonna get through it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How long more? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, no, but I, I, in all seriousness, do you, do you do anything different? Like because it is such a physically demanding show. That's what I'm kind of alluding to. Like, do you have to do? Do you have to do anything? Do you to train? Lots of exercises, gym? man. A lot of exercises. <laughs> yes. The right hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 I've been doing it since I was 13. Yeah. Regularly. The regular so exercises? I, I'm very good at it. <laughs> what are you Takato. talking about? Uh, how long Practicing. have you guys been? You guys have been touring now for what? Like six, seven years together? Yeah. You right? can tell, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, what are some crazy... You guys must have crazy tour stories. I mean, you know, might not think of that as like, you know, classical musicians as, as being wild and crazy on tour, but you might as must have like funny stories. Classical from musicians Rose. are the worst, actually, because they are... They live in this environment, they're very close, you know, have to behave. Right. But when they drink, they go nuts. They go nuts. So you would be surprised. Who are the classical musicians that go nuts when they drink? Oh. <laughs> no, don't answer that. <laughs> what, 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 do, what do you guys like to do on the road, though? Do you have any crazy stories? or like, Do you have a favorite memory from all these years touring together? There are so many. I mean... <sighs> Crazy stories. Other than this. <laughs> so many, but I don't know if they are for public. Can <laughs> you share anything? No, I mean, no. what kind of audience is watching this anyway? Um, what kind, That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of audience is still watching this is, a, is maybe a better question. <laughs> that's a better question. <laughs> um, no, we're around the world right now. Do you oh, have really? You want, yeah, you have anything you want to, you know, say, get off your chest here? Mom. <laughs> I love you. Oh. I made it. I'm in New York. There you go. Sorry that you know I didn't make it by myself, but it still <laughs> still counts, huh? Fifty percent. Yeah. Do you wanna talk to mom or no? Hi mom. There you go. I love you. <laughs> That's nice. The softer sides of the rock and roll yeah. stars. All right. I saw you talking to MTV not too long ago about uh, dream collaborations. You wanted to work with uh, Adele and Ed Sheeran. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you you know those two? Those uh yeah. They're famous, right? Uh, do you, do you have anybody else you want to add to that list nowadays? Like in terms of what you'd like to collaborate with or who? Well, we've been lucky to collaborate with so many legendary musicians, such as Elton John, Steven Tyler, Bocelli, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And many more, but I mean, nowadays, I mean, there is no much legends left. Right, it's like only you two. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you two, the band, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and them, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, what's uh, uh? Of course, you can probably point out the uh, the differences between like a Red Hot Chili Peppers and a Bocelli, but how are they similar performing together? Actually, I mean, it's. Uh, how do you say? I mean, you always connect on totally. You don't like uh, look like this is this genre, this is this kind of music, this is this type of band. We just feel it, you know. We are like chameleons, Intuition. musical chameleons. We can like adapt to any other genre or artist. That's why we we can collaborate with opera singer. We can collaborate with hip hop hip hop artists. We can with the rock band. You know, when we play with Red Hot Chili Peppers, we just met on stage first time. Really. And Flea came to us and said, just jam in A minor. That was it. That's all I said to you? Yeah. Wow. And we were jamming in A minor. And it was all like we've been playing f since for like so many years. Where did this happen? Or did this uh, in right Croatia. Happen? Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. So it's like this spontaneous thing that happens that yeah. creates this magic. It's that musical language. You cannot really plan that. those kind of things. Right. What so did you do a Chili Pepper song? Yeah. What song? Californication. Wow. Is that online? I think so. That's yeah, it cool. should be somewhere. Uh, all right, so uh, before we toss it over to the audience here, um, 
the tour kicks off February 5th, I believe. And I'm trying to remember the city, but you are again. You're gonna you're gonna hit here. What's funny about that? <laughs> this, this guy, uh, and you guys are gonna hit here in Radio City uh, Music Hall, and then you're gonna wrap things up in Orlando. Uh, we actually don't have time. I uh, I misspoke for the audience questions, but I do want to thank you thank guys God. for stopping by. <laughs> the record, uh, let there be cello. Any final words before we uh, head on out? Let there be cello. Nice. <laughs> All right, guys, two cellos, everybody. Thank you.